Blastoise has finally returned with the Indigo Disc DLC, and it's still an absolute beast. With its solid bulk at base 100 defense and 105 special defense, Blastoise has the bulk to be an amazing support Pokemon with Rapid Spin, plus its new move Flip Turn to get amazing pivots. It also has the ability to heal and rain with its Rain Dish ability for longevity, but Blastoise can become a nasty offensive threat with Shell Smash. Shell Smash is able to double both its special attack and speed, and all of a sudden its base 85 special attack and 78 speed become much more threatening. We can give it the White Herb item which negates the defense drops from Shell Smash, and Blastoise can easily catch people off guard. Ladies and gentlemen, I cannot stress this enough, we have so many new toys to play with from the Indigo Disc DLC. I plan on checking them all out on the channel. If you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. It's free, it only takes you a second, I promise you will not regret it. And let's go ahead and jump into the match. Alright, so my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Bubble Buddy. The Araquanid comes out, and this tells me that this is definitely going to be a Sticky Webs based team. Whenever there's a spider lead, it's, you know, webs are coming your way, and I don't like spiders, or webs, or sticky stuff in general. So, I'm having a bad time, however, I do have the Skarmory lead, who has a solid matchup here. I'm honestly looking pretty free to set up some hazard. So, turn one, I'm gonna go for that Stealth Rock, and I kind of just let them set up the sticky web. There's not really much that I can do here. Uh, I do have the Hitmon top in the back with the Rapid Spin, so I need to ensure that I'm able to get those webs out of there. Basically... Having reduced speed is not going to be fun. So here I decided to just go for a layer of spikes. I figure they probably switch out here. But they actually stay in and they're going to end up going for the soak. Which now my Skarmory is just all sorts of wet and turns me into a water type. Which looking at the team they've got opens me up to basically take some damage from a lot of stuff. I do not prefer my Skarmory to be wet. So I'm going to actually switch out here. And I'm going to go directly into the Hitmon top. Going to do a couple different things here. First of all we're going to turn this place into a damn dance party. And second of all. I can potentially have a matchup against Hydrapple. I figure they soak me turning into a water type on the Skarmory, which opens up the door for the Hydrapple to do some huge damage with energy balls, which generally it's not able to do on a Skarmory unless I'm water type. So I actually make the correct read here. It does draw out the Hydrapple, and now I'm in a potential spot to catch him a little bit off guard here. This thing comes in, and I'm a salt vested hit on top, meaning I can take special attacks all day from this, but. I'm going to deal with the apple at hand here. I'm going to go right for the triple axle. Not a lot of people expect Hitmontop to carry this coverage. And this thing being absolutely allergic as shit to ice, that is going to take care of it. So that is a huge threat out of the way. The Hydrapple is going to go down to the third hit there. And triple axle Hitmontop is literally insane. This thing is it's a super fun mon to use right now. So now they get a free switch and they decide to go into Latios. Another just absolutely massive dragon threat. And... I do not have a lot of switch-ins to this, so I figure I'm Assault Vested and max HP. I know that I can take an attack from this, so I'm going to actually take this opportunity to go for the Rapid Spin, as they actually Luster Purge, which is literally insane. Hitmontop is able to live it, though, thanks to that special defense boost from the Vest, and I can get that Rapid Spin off, effectively getting rid of the Sticky Web. Now we don't have to worry about coming in and losing speed here. So at this point, again, I still have nothing to switch into this. They actually end up going for the Ice Beam, expecting a switch, but I live... And instead, they just turned me into a Popsicle. So, the live there was literally nuts. But, <laughs> but of course, the freeze comes at the worst possible time. I could have got another triple axle off and let Hitmontop just absolutely run a damn train over here. But, you know, it is what it is. We're just frozen in time, middle of our dance. And they just end up finishing us off with the Aura Sphere. So, at least I was able to rapid spin away the Sticky Web. We took care of the Hydrapple. And Hitmontop put in a lot of work to open the door here for some momentum. So... Here I'm deciding to switch into the Flygon on the Revenge, and I figure if I go into Flygon here, obviously I'm Choice Scarf. I know that I can outspeed, and a Dragon Claw should effectively kill here. But I expect them to switch, so I go for the U-turn to try to grab momentum. However, they actually just stay in, and they do live the U-turn. So that is not really ideal, because now I have to hard switch something into an attack. And I figure if anybody's got to do it, it's it's going to be Skarmory. Sorry, buddy. I bring this thing in here. They do go for the Draco Meteor, so that's going to do a nice little chunk of damage. However, it does give them the special attack drop. And that is actually super nice, because since I have my Stealth Rock up, this thing can't really effectively switch out and be used for later. As they don't really have any hazard control, there's nothing really stopping me from setting up some more layers of spikes here. It's going to help with my end game, and I'm seeing a potential opening for either like the iron boulder blastoise is looking pretty nice so i go for that layer of spikes as they just ice beam and they're realizing that damn this skarmory i'm being taken advantage of over here and the latios finds himself in a spot where he's being outbirded by the metal bird so 
I consider a switch into Blastoise here, as this thing's minus two special attack, it's not going to be able to do a whole lot of damage. But instead, I just decide to go for that third layer of spikes. I will now have full spikes and a stealth rock, and anything that switches in is going to take considerable chip uh, for a potential sweep in the back. So, they decide to switch into the Archaladon, Archaladon, he's a, he's a staple remover. Listen, this thing comes in, and I just sprinkle some Legos around his feet. So... At this point, Skarmory is looking pretty vulnerable to be absolutely zapped out of the damn sky by an Electro Shot. A lot of the time you see these, they're going to be carrying the Power Herb along with that Electro Shot to get the one turn attack off. And I do not really have anything that wants to switch into that. So I'm just going to end up clicking the Body Press potentially, and they do go for the Electro Shot. So they go full bridge mode. He's going to Digivolve on my ass, and it does absorb some electricity, gives him the special attack boost from that and then immediately is able to just activate that power herb and then just absolutely launches a damn cannon <laughs> at my at my Skarmory and that's gonna take care of me. But here's the reason why I'm fine with that. They, they use up their power herb, which means that they do not have a single turn attack to be able to use it against Blastoise. And if there's a chance, this is kind of my opportunity to get a shell smash up here. So I bring in the Blastoise, whose textures are looking real nice out here. Buddy is looking menacing as hell and I'm gonna go for the Shell Smash. Now, I know that this thing does potentially have some coverage with just a Dragon move, but I know that I can live at least one attack from this thing. So, I go for the Shell Smash, and I say, hey, if you wanna do some crazy stat shit and use an item, I can do it too, buddy. I get the uh, special attack raise and the defense drops, but that activates my White Herb, and that's gonna bring my defensive stats right back to normal. So, Blastoise is looking good over here as they do opt to go for the Electro Shot once again, now, of course. Power Herb is used up, so it's going to be a two-turn attack here, so I essentially get the free Shell Smash, and now I have an opportunity. I could potentially Shell Smash again, um, or I just decide to go for the Ice Beam. Now, I'm actually also carrying the Terra Grass, and while I know that I have massive damage on the Ice Beam, I don't quite know, you know, what set this, uh, this Archaladon is working with. So, I'm going to go for the Terra Grass and click Ice Beam. I know that I'm going to be able to outspeed and get some big damage, but just in case this thing is able to live... I want to be Terra Grass. So I go for the Ice Beam. That is actually just going to end up taking care of the big-ass staple remover. And now if you got any staples stuck, you are shit out of luck because that thing is dead as hell. So the bad news about going for the Terra Grass there is now that I open myself up to super effective bug damage from the uh, Araquanid. So this thing comes in, takes Stealth Rock and Spikes, and this is why it's super important that I got those hazards up because... Uh, now I can actually click the Hydro Pump and potentially have enough damage to knock this thing out. However, Araquanid has the opportunity to be running the Water Absorb ability. But looking at their team, I figure, you know, they actually don't really have a huge Water Weakness. So I figure they actually end up running the Water Bubble instead. It actually comes in clutch because Hydro Pump does go off. It doesn't actually quite end up knocking this thing out. And that opens me up for a Leech Life, which does around half and heals them. But... They are still in range for a Hydro Pump to kill here, so as long as Blastoise brought his damn glasses, we can land another Hydro Pump, which we do. Homeboy actually shoots them out of his cannons, because what a world we live in. We connect, and that is going to take care of it. So we got lucky that this thing wasn't running Water Absorb, but a lot, of these a lot of the times these do opt for the Water Bubble ability, which literally doubles the damage of their liquidation, and just reduces the fire damage by half. So. Uh, we make the correct call there, it pays off, and now they get a switch into the Dragapult. So this thing comes in and takes all the hazards under the sun, and I figure if there's any time for them to Terra, this is probably it. I want to click Hydro Pump so damn bad, but I'm actually just going to go for the safe play and click the Ice Beam. The reason is, I've already hit two Hydro Pumps, so like, I'm due for a miss. That's it, 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 I have to miss here. So I go for the Ice Beam, it's just going to be the safest option, but they do, of course, go for the exact Terra. That I was expecting, they're gonna go for that Terra Steel. Uh, and now at this point, I am faster because of that Shell Smash, and the Ice Beam is not quite gonna be enough to knock it out. But they actually end up going for the Dragon Dance. Now, here's where it gets really interesting. This thing does get the plus one in speed. I, however, do have my speed doubled due to that Shell Smash. And since they are running a Sticky Web team, there's actually a chance that this thing is running like less than 100 EVs in speed, which will allow Blastoise to outspeed, and it actually happens. After a Dragon Dance, I still am able to outspeed, and that takes care of the Dragapult with one more Ice Beam. That was honestly lucky that they weren't running max speed on that thing, but again, if you're relying on a Sticky Web team, your opponent's you know speed being dropped, you don't necessarily, on a fast mod like that, need to be running the speed EVs, but... It pays off for us extremely nicely because of the fact that we were able to rapid spin those away 
and Blastoise is just out here zooming. There's never been a turtle this damn quick going mock speed out here. So <laughs> Latios came in, does die immediately to the hazards, and now their final Pokemon is gonna be the Iron Valiant. So the Stoice is feeling fast as fuck, boy, but Iron Valiant is actually gonna be Quark Drive and get the speed boost. So there is absolutely no way in hell without speeding this thing. However, this thing's max damage at this point is going to be Moonblast, and that has a chance to do 47 to 55% to Blastoise. We actually get a nice roll there as we're sitting above half health. We're able to live, fire off a nice little flash cannon even after the special attack drop is going to take care of it, and that is actually insane. That is going to finish off the match, and this is straight up the little Blastoise that could. Doing stuff that the Stoice has no business doing, and that's what you get when you bring the Gen 1 GOAT, for real. So I thought that was just a really interesting game, Blastoise being able to outspeed because of the fact that they're relying on Sticky Web, and it being able to set up and also living the Moon Blast, which we did get a nice little lucky roll. So there's always some luck involved, but overall, super fun match. Let me know what you guys thought. I do appreciate all the support on these videos, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.